Within the Saharan desert nestles the once vast existence of Lake Chad. It is a shallow endorheic lake that has fluctuated in size over time, especially in the last 60 years, due to climate change. This internal drainage basin, unlike typical basins that gather in rivers and flow to the oceans, does not collect into any of the world's major seas. It is relied on by an excess of 30 million people who are spread over Chad, Niger, Cameroon and Nigeria, due to its huge size and ideal location, sitting on the edge of the African Sahara. The formerly voluminous Lake Chad Basin is thought to have originated during the Cretaceous Age. Intriguingly, the lake's size has fluctuated dramatically throughout time, as prehistorians have often suggested of a period during the Ice Age, where its size extended beyond the Tibesti Mountains in the northwest of Chad, with an enormous size of over 2.5 million square kilometers. When the lake was large in the 1950s, it is said to have had a surface area of 26,000 square kilometers, which is approximately the size of the country, Rwanda. Scientists confirmed that the lake only reached such a big form on rare occasions for short time periods, and the last time it was so huge was in the 1950s. In its normal size the lake has a surface area of 18,000 square kilometers, is made up of a single body of water, and features 2,000 dune islands. Imbibed with a host of diverse marine and terrestrial ecosystems, the Lake Chad Basin engulfs biosphere reserves, World Heritage and Ramsar sites, as well as internationally significant wetlands. Once the fourth largest lake in Africa, it is the largest lake in the Chad Basin, as well as Africa's largest drainage basin. Fossils of a hominid unearthed in the lake's bed show that the lake has been around for well over 7 million years. For as far back as time would tell, this necessary resource has supplied drinking water, irrigation, fishing, livestock, and economic activity to a population of over 30 million, in and around one of the most impoverished region on the planet. Since the recurring droughts began in the early 1970s, the size of the lake has dwindled by over 90 percent, particularly in the last 60 years. Back in 1963, the lake's surface size was 26,000 square kilometers, yet, it presently stands at less than 1,500 square kilometers. This can be attributed to chronic drought and desertification which have triggered diminished inflows into the lake. Other factors attributed to the dramatic shrinking is the result of poor human management, improperly designed and used dams and irresponsible irrigation. According to the United Nations Environment Program, climate changes have caused about 50% of the shrinkage of the predominantly shallow Lake Chad, with a burgeoning demand for water contributing to the other half. The region's food and nutritional insecurity have been exacerbated by the region's ever-changing environment. Seasonal and inter-rainfall trends are shifting tremendously each year, while temperatures are rising 1.5 times higher than the global average. This has manifested in food insecurity, driving populations into the clutches of extremist organizations. Currently, the lake has suffered a 60% drop in fish productivity and pastureland deterioration, which has depleted 46.5% of dry matter in particular areas. A loss in the animal population and a potential danger to biodiversity are imminent fall factors that stay in place according to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. Inhabitants are struggling to make ends meet as their propensity to respond to the challenges associated with climate change is waning. In days of old, for instance, settlers strategized counters that sustained them even in periods of failed rains. They often migrated to other optimum places to harvest or pasture their animals, but these options have been severely curtailed due to significant military constraints conferred as part of counterinsurgency operations to eradicate guerrilla or revolutionary activities. The region's dwindling natural resources and grazing pastures have intensified conflict amongst farmers and pastoralists. Between 2016 and 2019, around 4,000 individuals died in Nigeria as a result of farmer pastoralist hostile clashes. The youth in the region are compelled to join militant groups and engage in lawless activities in order to cope with the rigorous living standards. Inasmuch as the decrease of the once mega Lake Chad may not be the only contributor to the surge in violent extremism, 
as other key drivers such as terrible administration and governance has also dealt their hands, notwithstanding, the correlation is glaring. Coupled with this, researchers working within the late Chad vicinity have emphasized the ruthless economic crisis, government policies, rising inequality, and growing corruption among the ruling political elite as being other major players as well. One of the primary goals of all parties involved, including the Lake Chad Basin Commission, is to regulate and control the use of water and other natural resources in the basin, as well as to initiate, facilitate, and strategize natural resource development and research activities. The Nigerian President Buhari has led the charge for replenishing the depleted lake, with the cooperation from the basin's regulatory members which include Cameroon Chad, Niger, Nigeria, Algeria, the Central African Republic Libya, and Sudan. The initial proposal for the megaproject to divert water from the Congo River into Lake Chad was actually met with skepticism by member states of the congo ubangi Sangha Basin International Commission, who were concerned that it would suppress the energy capacity of the Inga Hydroelectric Dam, hinder accessibility on the Ubangi and Congo rivers, and reduce fish catches on these waterways. However, studies found that the idea behind the ambitious project would remove less than 8% of Congo's water, leaving behind between 92 to 95% which would not only reach Inga, but could double energy generation at the new dams and then at Inga. Since its first proposal in 1929 by Herman Sargil as part of his Atlantropa project, there have been several studies on how to save the shrinking Lake Chad through the Lake Chad Replenishment Project initiative. The project concept involves major water diversion scheme to divert water from the Congo River Basin to Lake Chad to prevent it drying up. Various versions have been proposed. Most would involve damming some of the right tributaries of the Congo River and channeling some of the water to Lake Chad via a canal to the Chari River, which flows from the Central African Republic through Chad into Lake Chad, accounting for 90% of the water entering the lake. In 2011, the Canadian firm CIMA, under contract from Lake Chad Basin Commission, produced a feasibility study of several versions of the project. There are several proposals to divert water from the Ubangi River, the biggest tributary of the Congo. This requires pumping the water some 180 meters uphill, so it requires a power source, either hydroelectric or solar. The CIMA study considered a version using a dam on the Ubangi to generate 360 megawatts of power, 250 megawatts of which would be used to pump water. It was predicted that it would cost $10 billion to transport 91 cubic meters per seconds of water to the Chari River. Another option of the research advocated for the use of solar power to help plummet the price and disturbance of hydroelectric dam when pumping water from the Ubangi. Research findings according to the CIMA feasibility study also highlighted the possibility to divert water from a dam on the Kato River, a tributary of the Ubangi near Bria. The concept was to take advantage of the beneficial geographical height, which is high enough to allow water to flow to the Chari by gravity alone, without the need for pumping. It was anticipated to cost $4.5 billion and deliver 108 cubic meters per second. Another proposed multi-billion dollar ambitious project to restore Lake Chad to its former grandeur entails conveying water north via a 2400 km navigable canal following a contour line. This would generate hydroelectricity at many locations along its length and power new industrial townships, while replenishing the lake. The ambitious project, dubbed Transaqua, was designed by a team of engineers from the firm Benefica, led by Dr. Marcelo Vici. The project was envisioned to not only dam the Kato, but the other tributaries to the south, such as the considerably bigger Mbamu, Uel, and Arawimi. However, big rains bring muck, and as amazing as this concept is, early signs anticipated a massive outlay for the mega project. The total water expected would be more than 1,500 cubic meters per second, which is 5 to 8 percent of the Congo's average flow, and more than the current total inflow to Lake Chad. However, the entire cost has been estimated to be more than $50 billion. 
This plan was initially considered unlikely to materialize as late as 2005 and rejected in favor of a smaller water transfer scheme from the Ubangi. Over time, however, the late Chad Basin Commission deemed the prearranged initiative from the Canadian firm CIMA feasibility, which involved pumping water upwards from the Ubangi River as inadequate to replenish Lake Chad, and adopted Transaqua concept as the only feasible project at the International Conference on Lake Chad in February 2018. On October 16, 2018, representatives from the Lake Chad Basin Commission and the Italian government signed a Memorandum of Understanding for Initial Funding for the Transaqua Feasibility Study. On December 16, 2019, an amendment introduced by Italian Senator Tony Iwobi to the 2021 Italian Budget Law included a financing of 1.5 million euro for the feasibility study of the Transaqua project. For the 30 million inhabitants within Lake Chad, the bittersweet paradox of water, which is the lifeblood of the formerly glorious lake, has transformed into a potential killer due to its tendency to be a stimulant for future strife. Transaqua supposedly is the biggest water project in the world. One of the claims reads that the waterway could irrigate between 50 to 70,000 kilometers in the Sahel, a territory spread in eight countries and 10 countries in the region would be beneficiaries of the transport system, along with the promise of generations of hydropower for all. But how can it all start when Democratic Republic of Congo, the land with the largest share of the Congo River Basin spread, has a profound apprehension of the proposal? According Benefica, the designers of the Tranaqua project, its plan will use less than 8% of the water the Congo River discharges into the Atlantic Ocean and would not be a threat to the Democratic Republic of Congo's continuing Grand Inga Dam project, which would create the world's largest hydropower generator if it is completed. It's about time the vital Lake Chad came back to life. Although rid of its former splendor it is possible to transcend the Chad Basin from its current state of destitution to a blissful, thriving source of long-term livelihoods and prosperity. If you enjoyed this video and want more definitive information about exciting trends in Africa, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our new channel, the New Africa Daily, your ultimate guide to staying informed on the latest in trending topics, facts, politics and more in Africa, within minutes.